Hi, today we're answering some quote-unquote unanswered questions for Better Call Saul. These are questions that weren't directly answered during the series, mostly because I don't think they were overly relevant really to the main plot. They were always meant to be things the audience fills in themselves. So today that's what we're doing. We're filling in the gaps based on what we know. This is the second part and a bit shorter. I've taken questions from the first video and I'm going to try and answer them here. How did Hector end up in Tuco's shack in Breaking Bad? This is a question some people believe would be answered. I thought it was potentially a possibility that he would return at some point in season six, but he didn't in the end. We leave off in BCS with Tuco still in prison, serving an extended sentence after knifing a guy in season three and going to prison in season two as a result of the events of 206, gloves off. We don't see him again after this in the BCS timeline. Tuco, despite his many flaws, is shown to be quite caring for his relatives, particularly older ones like his Abelita that we see in 101 and 102. After being released from prison, I imagine Tuco finds Hector in the care home and decides to take him to the cabin, assuming he is either safer with him after the death of Lalo, or will be more cared for by Tuco himself. Again, much like how Tuco cared for his Abelita. Either this, or Hector is only moved out into the cabin after Tuco's hideout is busted. Due to Hector's physical state in Breaking Bad though, when we first see him, I think he's been in Tuco's poor care for a while now. Tuco's drug addiction likely causing him to not be the best caretaker. What happened to Jeff? Jeff was very much the Huel of Better Call Saul. We leave off with Jeff in the Nebraska police station after he crashes his car outside the cancer scam patient's house. As Gene says, there's nothing to convict him for really, so he's probably going to be okay. The clothes store heist doesn't have any evidence remaining, so Jeff can't be convicted for that, and the break-ins and stolen IDs also can't really be traced to him, with him only driving the people to their properties, with Buddy being the one going in. It also doesn't seem like Saul ratted on Buddy or Jeff either. I feel like we maybe would have seen that. And I think it's basically because they're kind of irrelevant in comparison to Walter White's meth empire. Not only that, but Marion was a key player, or really the key player, in locating Saul to begin with. So even if they do have something on Jeff, the fact that Marion found where Saul was could definitely help them out in that situation. Similar to Saul's spiel about Walt being his tormentor, threatening him to work for him, Jeff could spin a reasonably similar tale if need be, and it would probably be believed. Saul is the bigger target here, and as Jeff had no ties to Saul's Albuquerque days, I really don't think there's going to be much interest in him. Again, especially because Marion was key in locating Saul. Who finished the super lab? This is a question that I don't think we really have any indication to. Werner and his crew got the lab into a close to finished state. I believe Werner mentions that all that remains is some blasting that he leaves to Kai, and then they would begin pouring concrete for the walls. This means it's basically in the state that we see it in Breaking Bad. It just doesn't look that finished because it's all rocky still, and it hasn't got the clean concrete finish. Between 609 and season 3 of Breaking Bad, there's about four years or so, leaving plenty of time for the work to be finished and another suitable crew to be found. Remember too that the hard part seems to be done. The hole for the most part is there. The stability of making the hole to begin with was in large part the issue and was why Werner and his crew were needed. I imagine a less skilled crew could likely clean up the end work, although knowing Gus, he probably gets people just as skilled. He presumably found Werner through his German Madrigal connections. Madrigal is international, and I'm sure another group could be sourced. It would have been cool to see, but I think it's really as simple as it was finished by someone else. How did Lalo get to Germany? This is a question I see around quite a bit, with lots of people being confused as to how Lalo could have gotten to Germany, what with being wanted in the US, and so likely unable to get on any international flights. 
I personally don't think it's that absurd though, with Lalo likely having cartel connections who can get him to other countries with a fair amount of ease. In universe, I believe it does take him at least a few weeks to get from Mexico to Germany and then to Albuquerque, so he could have even gone by sea or something. Lalo is shown over and over to be very resourceful and also extremely prepared. He had a guy ready as a body double in case he needed to fake his death. I think him getting to another country and back isn't really a stretch. I don't remember there being a direct show of how he could have gotten to another country, but again in the space of a couple weeks it seems plausible. If he were to go by flight and through an airport, his preparedness means he likely has fake passports. And also the world at this point assumes he is dead in the form of the charred body double. It's all over the news. So he could probably get through security. The only person really looking for Lalo at this point is Gus and his men. The wider world believes he is dead, which also includes law enforcement. How did Lalo know where Gus lived? This is another fairly straightforward one. I presume that most of the people in the cartel know where one another live. Meetings and parties are hosted at Eladio's. It appears Gus knows where Bolsa lives. And Lalo's compound is also not exactly trying to hide. So, simple answer, he probably just knew. It was probably common knowledge to the cartel higher-ups. It may have even been one of the things he picked up when he first started tracking Gus's business in Season 4. Alright, that's gonna do it. Let me know your own thoughts on these questions too, and if you have any answers that differ from my own. I'd be interested to hear them. Thanks for watching.